Hey everyone! So before we jump into today's video, I'm excited to announce that my brand new watercolor booklet, A Beginner's Guide to Watercolor, is finally up on my Etsy shop. I worked super hard on this thing and it covers everything you need to know as a beginner and some things that you may already know as an intermediate but need a couple refreshers. So head on over to my Etsy shop right now and go on and check it out. So let's jump right into the video. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So I get a lot of requests and ideas and suggestions of things that you guys want to see on my channel and someone suggested to do birth month flowers. So today we are starting off with January's birth month flower which is a carnation. So let's jump right in. Okay, so to start, I'm gonna go through my materials. I have my B watercolor paper today. I have my Winsor & Newton Common watercolors. I have my Princeton Snap Brush in a size six, my water, my paper towel, and we're ready to go. Okay, so we are gonna be doing the first video in our flower birth month series. <laughs> and January's birth month flower is a carnation. And carnations can be a little tricky because their petals are so tight together but I'm just gonna show you a simple way to do a loose carnation. And you get to pick what color you wanna make your flower because they come in tons of different colors. All right, so let's just jump right in. I wet my brush and I already have some of this cadmium red here. And I'm just gonna add some water to make it a really light shade of cadmium red, which actually is more pink. So <clears throat> we're gonna be doing one with a side view. So I'm just gonna take my brush and I am going to do kind of really loose with jagged edges petals. And what you're gonna do is you're going to leave white space in between sections and make it jagged because their, their petals are very jagged on the edge. And I'm just gonna kind of create kind of like a half dome of petals. So this is the side view. But make sure to leave some of that white space because it will act as highlights and a bit of a separation in between areas of petals, okay? And you want your brush fairly wet so you can go back in and add some more color because we're gonna be darkening up some areas of these petals Okay, but just make it very, very loose. Make sure it's wet still. If you need to go back over and make sure it's there's enough water on there before you add darker color, do so, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna go in with some darker red. So I'm just gonna take more red pigment here and I'm gonna go at the base and then the tips of those jagged edges. Okay. Just very loosely. The base where they all kind of connect here and then the tips. So there should be white space around those tips. So you'll get a nice dark red and then a white space which will act as a highlight. You can see that. <clears throat> okay. Like that. Okay. And if you want to go in a bit darker, you can do that too. So just going straight into my paint. I'm just adding a bit more red to some of those tips. Like that okay and that's a carnation kind of from the side okay and now we're gonna do one that's kind of where you just see more of the flower because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing the green part underneath here and when the flowers pointing at us you're not gonna see that kind of bulb that's that's um, holding those petals together so we're just gonna do more of a circular um, instead of this is like more of like a half circle, like a dome, we're going to do more of a circular one. So we're seeing it kind of from the top down, like it's kind of flopped over and is pointing to us. So you're just going to create jagged bits, leaving white space in the middle there in like between 
some of those jagged. It's really hard to explain. <laughs> I love some of the comments where people are like, she explains things so clearly and I feel like half of the time my brain's not even working. So the fact that you can understand my instructions is awesome. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> so I'm just doing jagged shapes. Leaving that white space. The white space I think is the most important part of this whole thing besides the jagged shapes, because that will kind of create separation in between those petals. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. So let's let's kind of make this a bit asymmetrical in some areas. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with my red and I'm gonna drop in some more color, especially right in the middle and right around the edges where that those white um, spaces are. Now with some carnations, um, the tips have more color or it's like the inner base bit. So it's really kind of up to you which way you want to go with this. But again, make sure it's wet before you go and add that extra dark color so it blends nicely. If it just seems to be like sharp lines on top, that means that your paper wasn't wet enough. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with some darker color. And if you wanna add more like shadow, um, you can darken up your red. So I'm gonna take some red here by adding its contrasting color green. So I'm gonna take some Hooker's Green Dark. I'm just gonna add it a bit to mute that red and make it darker. So it looks like a shadow. Probably should have done that here a bit too, but I didn't. I might do some light lines. Okay, just like that. And okay, now we're gonna do the green stem and kind of it's kind of like a bulb that almost holds that petal part together. So I am going to, you might want to wait till it's completely dry. I'm just going to chance it and see what happens. I'm going to create a scoop there, scoop there. And I'm going to fill it in. I'm using sap green, which is a nice bright yellowy green. And then I'm going to create the stem. Like that. And then the carnation has like these separate leaves that are longer and thinner. You're just going to use the shape of your brush. It's kind of like this. Hold on. Let me darken that up a bit. Just using the shape of your brush and going light pressure, heavy pressure, leave it down for longer and go back up to light pressure. And that creates a longer, thinner leaf. Okay, same kind of thing, like that. And so we're seeing the side view of this one. This one, you're not gonna see this bulb part because it's behind. So maybe this flower is kind of leaning towards the side a bit more. So you're not gonna see that base part of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it will still have these little areas. So you're just gonna do like a little dip here and then have some of those leaves come out. Like that. Like that. And now I'm gonna go back in with some darker green, some Hooker's Green Dark. And I'm gonna create some more little leaves around the base here of this bulb area. I'm gonna go around that leaf Maybe create a bit of a shadow around, <clears throat> sorry, my throat. Um, just adding a bit of shading on the stem. <laughs> now my stem is dry, so it's not bleeding into it. So I'm just gonna blend it out a bit. It dried too fast, which is okay. And you can see those really sharp lines. So I'm just blending it out. So I might just go over 
this again with the sap green just to wet it up and then go back in with the hooker's green dark on one side so it blends like that okay and then the same on this one Go back in with my darker green, more towards one side of the stem to add a shadow. And the same with the leaves. Like that. I think I'm just gonna dry off my brush and take up some of this hooker's green dark color. I want a bit more of the sap green on this, like that. There you go. There is your simple carnation for the month of January. Okay, actually, after letting it dry a bit and just kind of looking at it again, the darker bits have kind of bled into most of this. So you don't really see the contrast of the light and dark. So now that it's dry, I'm gonna add a second layer of some dark red. And because this is dry, it will be a layer on top and it won't bleed. So you're just gonna create some more jagged shapes. If you want, you can leave it the way it was before too, just to create a bit more texture. And you can always do that too on these ones, maybe some lines or whatever you want. And there you go. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.